hello everyone welcome to another video as you know today we're going to be diving into it actually straight into it so two things we'll be talking about today one idol worship two infanticide yeah and those are two serious problems in our global village our world okay so the first one as you know, I mean, if you've seen any of my videos before, you should know that this is related to media influence, okay? It's related to media influence, but it's a, it's a wide encompassing topic. So it covers so many areas, right? So, idol worship. Who are, uh, who are our idols, actually? You know, who are our, our idols today? I know many people are not uh, bowing to a small wooden statue at the back of the compound although some people still do that you know but majority are not so who are the idols then the idols are the ones you see on your screen the ones you glorify the ones you aspire towards the ones you think are worthy of your emulation you might also call them celebrities you might also call them your role model now, these false idols who have been put on a pedestal for you and who you have put on a pedestal are now leading our society, which is you and people around you, majority of them, down the wrong path. Because you see them and their lives, to see, which you actually know nothing about really, but the lives that they portray seem so fantastic and seem so aspirational, you know, and you watch their music videos and you watch their, you know, movies and you watch their this and their that, you know, and they are, you know, promoted as aspirational to you and therefore you accept them as aspirational. Now, this is a problem. It should not be a problem, but it is a problem because of the sort of messages that they embed. And I've said it countless times before, these celebrities are not in charge of their lives. They're not, they are basically puppets. They are high-end puppets, okay? So if you see one artist or one actor or, that, or actress that you think, oh, it's so cool, I just wanna be like them, you know, you should really reconsider that. You should really reconsider who your role models are. Okay, now there's a higher power at play, okay? Good and evil, said it countless times, good and evil. But mainstream has been hijacked for evil. Okay, mainstream has been hijacked for evil. So we'll be looking at one of the more famous of your idols today. Remember, there's even a show that they call celebrity, uh, uh, what do you call it, American Idol. Now they have Nigerian Idol. Why do you think they call them idols? They're trying to look for the next celebrity in that, uh, in that show, right? So why do you think they call them idols? They want you to worship them as some of you already are, as an insignificant and also deceiving replacement for God that would lead to absolutely nothing but destruction. Okay. Now, if we're looking at one of your more famous um, um, actors, uh, what do you call it, not actors, celebrity, Beyonce, right? Everybody knows Beyonce. Now, this is the peak, right? Beyonce is basically at the peak of the uh, entertainment industry, right? Now, for Africans, you might say, okay, maybe I should care or risk it or blah, blah. But really, if you step out of these planes, not many people know them. Some know them, but not many people know them. But everybody in the world knows Beyonce, right? Almost everybody. Some people actually literally worship Beyonce. There is a Beyonce church, okay? So uh, <laughs> you need to understand that the, the works of darkness are real, okay? And like I've said before, these celebrities do not own their lives. They are basically high-end puppets. That's what they are. Doesn't matter which one, doesn't matter which um, field that they've become famous in. If they are secular and they are mainstream, they are puppets. Okay. Now you have this, um, this celebrity, right? Basically coming out to tell you that she gets demon possessed when she goes on stage, okay? 
but they won't use the word demon because they don't, they, they don't want to scare you or they don't want you to realize the actual truth of it. So, but she's saying that an entity takes over her. I'm going to play it for you, right? And these, I mean, this is someone at the peak. I want you to get that, okay? Now, if you ask any um, artist that is even, that's already well known, okay, in their area, their local area or something, that who do they want to be like, okay? Whether it was female or male, okay? That who do they want to be like in their pick? I'm sure before they mention three people, they'll say Beyonce, okay? Before they mention three, they'll say Beyonce. Now, this is someone who is stating categorically that she gets demon possessed. Okay. This is somebody who in her songs says she wipes her menstrual cycle with the pages of the Bible. Okay. She uses the pages of the Bible as a tamper. Okay. That's part of one of her songs. Okay. Now, let us, let us look at this. Okay. Because we still have some things to cover, right? But look at your idols. Look at your celebrities and look at where they are leading you towards that you so blindly glorify them and they are idols really in your face, in your eyes. You must recognize the work of the enemy and stop being so gullible. This is, this is not only about Beyonce, by the way. This is all of them. This is also Taylor Swift. This is Jay-Z. This is Kim Kardashian. This is Asha Kerr. This is Whiskey. This is all of them. This is David. This is all of them. Okay, but we're looking at the peak so you can understand that it is the same thing for the rest of them because I doubt none of them are as rich as she is. Very few people are as rich as Beyonce is. Okay, because the devil gives them power so that they can promote their negative influences. Okay, it's all for destruction at the end of the day. But the same way he tempted Jesus, the same way he tempted them, he tempts them, still tempts them to this day. Bow to me, and I'll give you all the riches of the earth. I'll give you the fame, I'll give you the power, I'll give you the money, I'll give you everything. But bow to me, your influence is to be to promote my own kingdom, not the kingdom of God. And it's exactly what is happening here, and we need to become awakened to it. Now let's look at this video. Right, so this video is actually a reaction from somebody else, you know, a reaction from a YouTuber overseas. So we're going to be looking at the clips that he already put out there, right? So shout out to this guy and uh, Noah Jacob, shout out to him. So let's look at this, right? Good luck, family. Welcome back to the channel. So in this video right here, we're about to be watching how Beyonce gets possessed by another external spirit that she likes to call Sasha Fierce. Now she said, right. So remember, she's calling the demon. He said external spirit, but there's nothing like external spirit. Okay. You are either a spirit of light or a spirit of darkness. And if you're a spirit of darkness, it's a demon or an evil principality, mostly demons because demons are the ones that roam this earth. Okay. So it's not an external spirit. Or any other thing that they call it, she calls it Sasha Fierce. Uh, you know, Beyonce calls it calls the, the entity or the alter ego, whatever you want to call it, as ultimately to the demon Sasha Fierce. Okay, so that <laughs> I mean, anyways, let's let's get into it. This multiple times in multiple different interviews, so it's coming to the point where the people that are really still true Beyonce fans, y'all not even worshiping Beyonce, y'all worshiping her alter ego, that demon that's possessing her name, Sasha. That's who y'all really enjoy at this point in time, because she literally said, every single time I go up on stage, a whole entire another entity comes into me and takes over. It's no longer even me. I just want to show you guys this picture right here, because it shows a lot. It shows which side that Jay-Z and Beyonce are really picking. They're not praying to Father God. They're not right. So look at this picture here, because I don't really want to take up too much of his content. I just want to get to where I want to point out, you know. So look at this picture here. This is Jay-Z with a witch. She's a popular witch in the United States. Now, they've gotten to a point, okay, in the States where they now have popular witches, okay, right? When God said, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, okay, you're to be killed for witchcraft, whether you're a man or a woman, okay? But now they have, because 
the point actually of all this, apart from leading you to hell, is to also reintroduce paganism. To introduce paganism, to introduce the worship of false idols. Okay? So, and uh, the worship of demons, the worship of all sorts of evil things. You know? So, look at this. This is Jay-Z with his forehead on this this uh, witch's uh, forehead. You know? And they are, they are literally having a, a, an occultic what do you call it? A demonic uh, procession in front of people. Okay, they don't they don't really hide this. Okay, even uh, apart from the ones that are even popular amongst them, you know that apart from the celebrities, those that are really behind it, they don't hide it. They don't hide what they're doing. Okay, so you need to guard your mind. So look at this. You're having this procession here, you know, and there's a picture right beside. You can see the demonic, you know, the image here right now. I mean, it doesn't even take a suit here to understand it. Okay. Probably transferring demons to each other or something like that. Or spirits to each other, which are ultimately demons. I mean, you really need to guard your mind. And they're just they're continually doing this. Oh, they, don't, they don't believe in Jesus. They know Jesus is real, but they're scared of him, bro. They are really messing with witches out here. This is a very well-known witch. This is Jay-Z right here. Okay, you hear what she said? What hear what he said? A very well known witch. They know her. Okay, probably staying in New York or in California because those are the thresholds of the devil, really. You know. Because <laughs> at this point in time, bro, like, why are you doing all of this, bro? For the money and fame, bro. Look at what he's doing. I don't know what. To right, you know. I also found this commentary to be, you know, a bit interesting. Some some things he did not fully understand, but at least, you know, it's still on the part of light, so it's all right. Yeah. So, but it's not only for the money and fame, okay? Of course, they've been given that because uh, through the fall of man, the dominion that man had was now transferred to the devil because of the fall of man, because 70 years only you obey, okay? But we have redemption in Jesus, right? But for the world, even Jesus still calls Satan the prince of this world, okay? So it, it still has power in the world, in this world, you know? So the thing is for money and fame. It's not only for money and fame, but to draw people towards the dark. Because you, if you are an ordinary person right now, you have no idea of the spiritual. You have no idea of what they're actually planning for you through these things. You're just watching them, right? And you see this person, very famous, very well-known, a, a complete celebrity, and he's putting his forehead on a witch's forehead, and they're having basically a ceremony of witchcraft in front of people, okay? And you, you know that it's popular, you know it's well-known, you know it's very, very rich, okay? If, if you lack understanding about the spiritual especially, you will think that maybe it's not so bad. Maybe it's not so bad. This is not a popular guy. He's not famous. He's not, you know, at least he's famous, right? He must be doing something right, right? At least that's what you think. No. And you'll be blindly misled by these things, as so many people are being misled. The deception is strong. The deception is strong. The demonic rituals going on right here, you have to keep in mind, this is Beyonce's husband. Beyonce ain't too far fetched from whatever they doing right there, but you guys about to see. So I want to show you guys how Beyonce clearly states that an entirely another being takes over and then everything. Now I want you to note something here. This interview that Beyonce was having with Oprah was actually in 2008. Because remember we're, we're talking about Beyonce, but of course Jay Z is also involved in it as well. You know, so the this interview. Because all the major celebrities are involved. As long as they are mainstream and secular, they're involved. So the this interview was in 2008. 2008, okay? She, on television, that's how, I want you to realize how blind people are. And I want you to be awakened also, okay? She admitted on television, mainstream, secular, highly watched television, that an entity takes over her, okay, when she performs. Okay, and she still grows in popularity continuously till this day. Beyonce, everybody knows Beyonce, right? You know, she admitted it on TV, but yeah, that had no impact because people are blind and asleep 
asleep and drooling spiritually. Okay, drooling. Completely asleep. Okay. I remember, like I said, this is not only Beyonce. This is all mainstream secular celebrities. Okay. I mean, look at, look, okay, you know what? Edgar Allan Poe said something. Okay, I'm not sure if it's Edgar, I think, yeah, it's Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe, that if you want to hide something, keep it in plain view. Okay? And I think that that is what really these people have done. Because they have hidden it so well by making it seem like it's not a big deal. They're talking about demon possession right on TV. Oprah is talking about demon possession with Beyonce and just acting like it's no big deal. Right? And because they present it as, like it's no big deal, you think it's no big deal too? Of course, they wouldn't, they wouldn't call it demon possession because, I mean, if they make it so clear to you, then you will have some, a reason to be wary, right? So they call it an entity or a being or an alter ego or something else, you know? Look at what she just said. The moment before when you're nervous, why well, you should be nervous anyways, and then something else takes over for you. Something else takes over for you. Okay, like it's not her anymore. It's the demon. Okay. Now, this. So this is another interview that she said the same thing. Wait, okay, yeah. Look at this before they show that though. Look at this. Um, what do you call it? This is one of her concerts. I you know she's dancing. Look at the particular move that she does. That's not normal. That's not normal. Okay. Than, than I expected. And Sasha was in full effect. Sasha is not Listen to what she just said now. Sasha was in full effect. Okay. So she literally named her demon. Okay. And there are also some demons that they call familiar spirits because they are familiar with you. You know. Remember, these were fallen angels. Okay. But now they are, I mean, the pits of darkness and evil. Okay. Because they chose against God. Okay. So look at look at this right here. I mean, she's saying Sasha is in full effect, you know. And she's also said we'll, we'll watch it. She makes it very clear that she's not the one. You know, she makes it very clear. When people see me, sometimes I think that when they meet me and they speak with me, Sasha Right, so that was just the dance move that I said. That was so weird, right? She said, when people meet me and talk to me, they're expecting Sasha. You know, like they think that she'll be like how she is on stage is what she, she, she's saying. But, you know, and she's making it clear that, you know, that is another entity. But of course, because you do not understand, some of you, most of you do not understand the extent of the spiritual you think, oh, maybe uh, it's just an author. You go, oh, it's just, oh, it's Beyonce. So, you know, whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter. You know? So you're completely blinded to the reality of things. The Lord enlighten you and open your eyes. Oh, right here. That's, that's the Sasha dance move. And um, I'm really kind of shy, and not really shy, but more reserved, and um, nothing like Sasha. He said she is really kind of reserved, and nothing like Sasha. Remember, remember she's talking she's talking about this Sasha, like it's somebody else, like it's her sister or a friend or something. Like it's somebody apart from her. You know? But you have to understand that she's still talking about herself. You know, but the demon that is possessing her is what she's talking about. 
okay? I mean, you need you need to get this, okay? Because ultimately, they're going to lead you down a road that is not profitable. Their songs only lead you to sin. Their songs make you normalize sin, make you think that it's no big deal to lead you to hell ultimately. Make your life miserable as can be here as well. You need to guard your minds. This is not going away, by the way. You know, this is only going to get worse. It's going to get worse. So better guard your minds. The new celebrities that, I even, that they're bringing up now, or even some of the already popular ones, worse and worse garbage. Worse and worse crap that they tell you are songs, that they tell you are videos. To guard your mind. But I guess I was really very entertaining on stage. So Sasha comes out and she spilled this. I mean, I'm trying to make you get this right now. Listen to what she's saying in case you can't hear what her, her properly. You know, she said, I guess I would not be very entertaining on stage until Sasha comes out. Okay, until Sasha comes out. Okay, so the demon is, and remember, they are trying to glorify evil. They're trying to glorify evil. So they're making it seem like, oh, okay, this demon is giving her all sorts of powers and all sorts of, you know, now she can do extra things that she could not do before. When you have a glorious God that does not hate you and that does not want to ensure that your life is completely ruined. But they tell you to, to follow the celebrities, right? And they are the ones, they are the ones. Go to their concert, rush to their concert. And view them as demigods. Let the stupidity and may the blindness be uplifted from each and every person that watches this in Jesus' name. Or hears this. Okay. You see what she just said? That she can try, but it will probably not happen. Like she's crediting this so-called Sasha, which is actually a demon. You know, I'm not sure if they're male or female demons, but they probably are. They probably are. You know, the image of God is male and female, so they probably be female demons too. You know, so then she's crediting this Sasha with everything she's doing on stage, making it clear that she's not the one. Okay? A demon. So she makes it very clear this is something else other than her. Okay? But because you're not... Anyways, may you be awakened spiritually. May, may you understand what this world is actually about. Okay? I hope that you do. Right, you know, what you said, very true, right? Sasha or whatever else, principality, even Satan, right, is scared of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Doesn't matter what sort of principality or whatever else, garbage, whatever it might be, they will bow to Jesus. They have no choice but to do that, you know. Hallelujah. Now, because we're talking about media influence generally here, right? He said something that's not related to the video, but I want to point it out because it's an example of media influence over time, right? So he said, if Jesus, uh, if Jesus shows up, um, Sasha Finna gonna run. Like Finna, Finna, you know, it's a so-called, um, not so-called, that's what it is. It's a, it's a black American term, okay, for going to, okay? So they try to influence your speech as well media influences your speech as well your slangs your you know aspirations all those things even your, your language is influenced as well you know so this fitna you know what that they you know is now a black slang a black american slang you know is not actually appropriate remember they want to make people dumber and dumber okay that's the that's the goal to make you more and more stupid less and less aware of the reality of life and more and more consumed with superficial and materialistic things. Okay? So, so this fitna or whatever they call it, is a slang, right, that they introduce 
that really makes no sense. You cannot, okay. The point is to make you less educated, right? So, or appear less educated, right? Because that's how you become dumber, right? So, for example, this this uh, like an example, right? If I if I happen to be white, okay, or, and uh, I was talking to this person, or even a black person, but highly educated, right? And I was talking to this person. I say he had an interview with me or something like that for a job. And he's talking to me like this, and he's saying fitna, and he's saying blah, blah. And I cannot even, he's speaking like a ghetto person, okay? And I cannot even really relate to what he's saying, right? Would I hire that person? No, I would not. I would not, because I want an exemplary model for my company, right? I want a stellar, you know, outlook and a stellar, uh, you know, out construction and organization and even even appearance for my company right so i would not really be too inclined to hire somebody who is spitting out slangs for example let, let, let me put a nigerian twist to it so i'm having an an uh, interview with somebody and he's saying i'm just like what is wrong with this one like, would I hire this person? No, I would not. You know. So it's um these slangs, this and that is is to is to dilute the language first to dilute the language. Secondly, to give an appearance of vulgarity. You know, even if you might not actually be vulgar, but to give an appearance with of, of vulgarity as well, and some other things. But that's not what we're focusing on right now. So let's uh, look at this video. Right, that was just uh, that was to make you understand that. Okay. Like saying notes and saying strong and do all these things that when I'm just by myself, I can't do. And I remember right before I performed, I raised my hands up and it was kind of the first time I, I felt something else come into me. And I knew. That hello, I hello. She literally said she felt something else coming to her. Okay, like the demon possessed her and she felt that. If you're spiritually awakened, okay, there's certain things that happen that you feel in your spirit. Okay, it's not everything that you will hear. Of course, you might be giving some revelations and stuff like that. But apart from that, you have an intuition in your spirit. Okay, so that was her feeling the demon possessing her. Okay. Just like the Holy Spirit too can nudge you. Not the Holy Spirit doesn't take over you like to force himself, never. But the Holy Spirit, of course, will guide you, will nudge you, you know. So, yeah. Gonna be my coming out now. Oh, come on now. It don't get more clear than that. Behind. I don't, what do they call what do they call the Beyonce freaking I can't recall y'all fans at this point. Y'all like the spirit. Right, you know, it just mentioned something that is so disturbing. You know, but it is a real thing. They have this group, right, called the Beehive. You know, they are supposed to be the diehard Beyonce fans. And I remember I told you she even has a church dedicated to her, you know, because the enemy will, like I said, she works for Satan. So anything that is not God, you know, is acceptable. As long as it's not, they don't mind for you to worship humans. Actually, the, the even before Jesus, people used to worship humans. Let, before I talk on the beehive things, let, let's go back to like the Roman Empire. Okay, in the Roman Empire, Caesar, who was their leader, like the president, was God to them. Okay, Caesar, his name was on the money, right? And that was far more symbolic than we have it today. Okay, his his rule, his his words were law and were final. Okay, so he was God to them. Okay, so that. That sort of uh, warped mentality, okay, where you worship human instead of worshiping God is what they're trying to bring back through these celebrities and idols. You must understand the spiritual and the other things that manifest themselves on earth as well, of course. Now, so these beehive people who are obsessed with you know, Beyonce and everything Beyonce, you know, because 
she has been given influence by the devil through the world to the world okay remember because of the fall of man satan now has power in this world god is the all supreme certainly you know but because of the fall of man satan has power that he did not have before okay so as been given now they use their influence to mislead people you know if i wish reminds me because I, like i've said already it's not only beyonce so this uh this popular artist overseas was being interviewed right and uh is a, is a man right a young man and the interviewer she, she asked him that you know your song i just can't get your song out of my head like what what is in this song really and he stated clearly it's hypnosis okay he said it very clearly he didn't hide it that it's hypnosis they are hypnotizing you they are hypnotizing you okay it was not, in fact, it didn't even say anything other than that. It just said it's hypnosis. Because they are hypnotizing you. That is the fact about it. So they are not hiding it. They're not hiding it. They're not saying, no, it's just a cool beat. It's just a, you know, it's a nice beat. You know, just show the beat, you know. No, it made it clear that, look, you're being hypnotized. It's hypnosis. Now, they also get into your subconscious, get into your soul. But anyway, that's a topic for another day, but you need to guard your mind because there's a lot that these things affect. A lot of effects. Now, you must guard your mind. Celebrities are not to be looked up to. Your only aspirations should be the word of God. Not any celebrity you see on the screen. Do you know who they are? Do you know what sort of deals they have made behind the screens that you will never ever know? Look at what they promote and let that be your guidance to, to what they, whether you should follow them or not. We should not be anyways. And if you do, the repercussions will manifest themselves. Okay? God, look, God gains nothing from telling me to warn you. From calling any pastor. From calling any evangelist. From calling any prophet. He gains nothing from that. We are the ones to gain something. If every single human being goes to hell today, God, it will, only, it will hurt him a little bit. You know, you feel bad because we are his creation. Other than that, nothing more than that. Nothing. We are the ones that will rot in eternity. So may Lord forbid. And that is why it's trying to guide your mind so that you're not deceived by the enemy and those that he puts in the forefront. Now, let us... This beehive thing is so ridiculous. Anyways, you should not have a collection of people that are only obsessed about one celebrity. It's ridiculous. But let's continue. You know, I should already be clear. deeper than and y'all some worshippers, bro. <laughs> because at this point, it's being said to you straight up. A whole nut. She said, "I felt something." What did she say again? I don't want to mess up her words. <laughs> she lifted her hands up. Um, I I felt something else come into me and I knew that was going to be my coming out night. So she lifted her hands up and she felt something else coming into me. The same exact way. So if you go to church and you praise the Lord, you lift your hands up, the Holy exactly. Spirit, boom, 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 you want the Holy Spirit to come into you. You feel what I'm saying? To make you more pure. Right. So this is very important actually. You know, she said she raised up her hand. And she felt something coming to her. And he now said, you know, just like when you raise up your hand in worship and the Holy Spirit descends on you. Now, the Holy Spirit is always with us, sure. But, you know, there is a, there is an elevated consciousness and leading when you worship, right? And when you pray and fast and stuff like that, right? So there is that. But this one is a forceful thing. This one is a demon possession, right? And remember, all of them want worship. All the demons want worship. Satan is also a demon, okay? But it's like their chief or whatever, you know? So they all want worship, all of them. But worship only belongs to God. Only God made us, only God has any right to, to our worship. So you can see the world more clear. She over here lifting her hands up so Sasha Fierce can come into her so she could be doing some different things. Because she clearly explained that, that normally she doesn't do all that promiscuous, all that sexual 
instructions to actually shine normally. But when, when Sasha Fierce starts to come in now... Right, you see, he's talking about promiscuous and sexual things that she does. Me, I've never actually even seen a Beyonce concert for even up to five minutes, you know. So... I don't, I don't actually know what she does on stage. But what he's saying now is obviously, you know, it's very promiscuous, very sexual things because they want to pervert your mind. They want to lead you to sin. They want to lead you to sin. They better guard your mind. Guard your heart. Guard your mind. That's when she becomes more lustful, more promiscuous, starts showing off her body, twerking throwing it back off on stage because that's a whole entire other entity taking over. What are they, the queen, queen beehive or whatever, like, like how do y'all really feel about that? You know what I'm saying? Like, just think about it and, and, and hearing what she's saying, what do you, how y'all feeling about that right there? Just from a logical standpoint, because she's saying it very clear. For the BT girls. <laughs> Right, even the song lyric, right, you know, crazy in love, because they want you to be crazy. Why must you be crazy in love? Why must, why can't your own love be sensible, okay? Why can't your own love be profitable and useful? Why must it be crazy? Why must it be crazy? They use those words intentionally, okay? They, they do not just write the song just for no reason. They put those words there intentionally. They know that words have power. They know that a music affects you with, in a way that you don't even fully realize. It's not only your mood, it's altering. It's also altering your subconscious. It's also altering your perceptions of things. Okay? It's infiltrating your soul. You need to understand that. Right. And honestly, you know what? I'm starting to like reacting to other people's reactions because I can also pick from what they say, media influences that I can point out to you. You know, I, I like that, you know. So look at what he just said now. You know, like, yeah, don't get me wrong. She's pretty, you know, emphasizing pretty, but that does, don't let that, you know, um, get you, uh, don't let that get into an, an illusion of what she's actually like, you know. Because for men, they emphasize that your goal should be outward appearance. That is the girl or the woman you are with should be beautiful. Only beautiful. It doesn't matter if she's a witch. It doesn't matter if she's a murderer. It doesn't matter anything. It doesn't matter if she'll kill you in your sleep even. But as long as she's pretty, it's okay. Because they, <laughs> they only want you to focus on the outward. They only want you to be obsessed with the external and not the internal. Of course, it's good to look, I mean, everybody got, everybody got made is beautiful, okay? Both men and women, okay? So, but that should not be your focus, okay? It's just like me as a woman now. A man is, you know, trying to ask me out to date me and all that, and he's handsome, okay? If, he's, if he does not talk to me properly, would I want to be with him? No. If he's not respectful, if he does not show that he truly cares about me, would I want to be with him? No. So it won't matter how it looks on the outward. It, what his character is, is what will determine that. So please let that be the same thing with you. And don't be so blinded by the enemy that you only care about physical attraction. Okay? Fall for her beauty and get trapped by her wickedness? Come on now. Why would we do that? We got to walk smart. We have to. Yeah? Okay, look at what you said. Awesome, right? We gotta walk smart. You got to walk smart. Okay, you gotta be smart. You gotta think. Okay, so very important. So this is so much being brought up right here. Now let's get to this video right here. Now this video, I'm not gonna lie, I already watched it. I already watched it, and when I watched it, it kind of made it made me chuckle because because. Sasha Fierce done scared Jay Z. <laughs> Sasha Fierce scared, scared Jay Z in this video right here while they're performing. Jay Z was type shook. I'm not gonna hold you guys. So this is right. So we're going to put a wrap to the 
a Beyonce part of it to the celebrity part of it and then go to the other part okay but the main thing I want you to get do not idolize the celebrities they are not worthy of your emulation you shouldn't even be listening to their songs you shouldn't even be watching their music videos my personal advice for you erase their songs from your flow I know that many of you are literally so addicted to them that you cannot even do that or think of doing that but at least you can start from trying to understand what they are actually telling you and realize that okay these things are not profitable to me this is this is actually portraying a negative way of life as good to me and i need to realize that and shun it i need to repel it okay you can start from there and then you grow okay now, let's uh, look at another video that also highlights a problem in our society. Now, I thank the Lord that this is not a fully Nigerian problem yet. Of course, it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's a worldwide problem, but it is not like, um, it's not so, I don't know, engulfed in our world. But you have to understand, you cannot have a regional perspective when it comes to this it is a global problem it's a global problem you cannot say oh, okay it's only nigerian so i don't really care. it's coming everywhere it's going to everything that they are you know pushing is for everybody so you need to guard your mind okay and not let it not be swept away by the enemy okay so it doesn't matter where it's starting from they want to get it to the world okay so this is another problem right the, the evil in our world, it has gotten so bad that for people who actually care about life, okay, for those who actually, who care about human beings and who care about the sustenance of life, they have to face negative repercussions for that. Can you imagine? Now, they say kill babies, okay? They say, okay, if you, if you just, now, I'm excluding with this, I'm excluding, let's say, extreme cases like, um, let's say, rape or something. I can, I guess I can understand, I, I, I guess I can understand why you would not want a reminder of something so horrible, you know, but excluding something so, you know, so horrible like that, right? Let's say a normal scenario where you had consensual sex and then you, you were pregnant, right? But you were not, uh, you're not married, okay? Now, they keep pushing that you should want to kill your baby. You should want to have an abortion. That it's, it's okay, it's normal. The enemy actually gained such a strong foothold in the United States because, like I've said before, it's from America to the rest of the world, you know. So, I had such a strong foothold there that they legalized abortion for decades, Decades. It was only, uh, I think, last year or so that you know that some people, thank God Almighty, were able to push against that. So they have, they now have some restrictions in some places, not everywhere, but in some places they now have restrictions for it. But they are still trying to push that back. They're still trying to reinstate it again. You know. So the the enemy is at work. The enemy is at work, and they're telling you that oh, it's your choice. It's not a big deal. It's not really a baby. You know, it's not really a baby right yet. So you can kill it if you want. Something that would have been you in the next 20, 30 years would have been you. Something that was you not so long ago. Just kill it, right? It's no big deal. And they, I mean, they want to ensure that you go to hell. Don't you get it? They want to ensure that. So you need to protect your heart and protect your mind from these negative influences. Now it has gotten so bad. Now this is this is everybody's fault, actually. You know, this this problem of abortion is everybody's fault. Okay. Now, first of all, it's it's media's fault. I'm talking from the the perspective of America to the rest of the world now. First of all, it's media's fault because they portray it like it's no big deal. They portray premarital sex actually like it's no big deal. And if it wasn't for premarital sex, I assure you, there will be a lot less abortions. There will be a lot less. They will be cut down by 95%, if not more. If not more. 
they are, they push it at marital sex like it's no big deal. They push irresponsibility on the male's part, on the man's part that you know you can you can have sex and not be responsible for your for your uh, you know for your actions if the woman gets pregnant. They want you to be stupid and to go against God's will because God clearly states that a man that does not provide for his household is worse than an infidel. And guess what? Once you get a woman pregnant, she is your household and that child also. So you're both going to get the blame for that. They also push responsibility on the on the part of the woman because it would be like, oh, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't have, I don't want to have to deal with this. You know, if the man is not responsible, why should I have to be the only one to take care of the child? I don't, you know, I don't want to have to do that, you know. So they, they, they make it seem, and the media are constantly pushing it like it's no big deal. It says it's a culture of wrong behavior that has led to this. Okay. I think they said roughly 60 million babies, 60 million babies. From the time of the from when abortion became legalized in the states till today that was in like the 60s or 70s or so 60 million babies can, can you 60 million okay that's how many lives have been lost because of careless behavior from you from everyone because of a lack of recognition of the importance of life. Just think for a second. What if you had been aborted? What if you had been aborted? What if your mother or your father said, oh, I don't want to be responsible? And you were flushed away also. You wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. So this madness that our society is promoting, that this evil world is promoting. Now you now have a few people, right? Some people who understand, of course, that the, the importance of life, and of, or this is, you know, many people do, but not everyone, obviously. You know, so, but even the few that are doing their best to work for life and work for, you know, goodness. In the United States, they are getting thrown into prison. They are getting thrown into prison. Remember, it has become a legal thing there. So they actually have abortion clinics. They have places where that's the only thing that they do there. It's abortion. Okay. So, and people who don't want that, of course, because they don't want killing of babies in their neighborhood. And they go there and they, you know, try to protest and they say, this is wrong. You shouldn't be doing this. This is wrong. You know, those people actually get taken to prison. When the Bible says, they that frame mischief by a law, this is what it means. Okay. Because they've actually put it into law that you cannot disturb anything that has to do with abortion. That if you see like any, you can't, you cannot try to interrupt anything that has to do with abortion, that you must allow it. Because they want to ensure you go to hell. Okay, so now, even even those that you know they are standing against it, that they don't want that, they are getting thrown to prison. Listen to the story here. Warren Handy, Herb Garrity, Heather Hidoni, William Goodman, and John Hinshaw. Remember those names. Those are the five latest political prisoners to be thrown in jail by evil regime apparatchiks right here in our own country. Okay, he said five, he's mentioning five people. This is Michael Knowles, very popular guy, very sensible, uh, you know, conservative, everything. Yeah. So the, he just mentioned five of the, these are the latest people, right? There are other, there are other people that have actually had to face that, but these are the latest ones, right? And he's, he's calling this regime evil because that is what they are. They are evil. This is an evil regime. This is an evil world, okay? Don't throw the word evil around lightly. Here, the word is entirely appropriate because the evil apparatchiks in Washington, D.C. are imprisoning these five patriots for the simple act of demonstrating against abortion. These five pro-life advocates demonstrated in defense of babies at an abortion mill, an infanticide factory. 
history, and for that, they face over a decade in prison. Now, I want to, oh my God. So you can fully get it. People who are advocating for life, do you get that? Okay, the good people, okay, they are saying no to killing your baby, okay? And they are getting into prison for decades. They're getting thrown into prison for decades. A decade is 10 years, okay? And they, more than that sometimes, okay? Now, people who commit robberies, okay? I've seen manslaughter cases, okay, that have gotten less time than that. Okay, so if you actually commit an actual crime, you sometimes, most times, even you get less time than somebody who is promoting the truth, somebody who is saying no to killing me. Can you get that? Can you get the putting of good as evil and the putting of evil as good? Can you understand what the Bible says when they say those that frame mischief by a law? set off any bombs, they didn't shoot anybody, they didn't do any of that. They just demonstrated against infanticide. Their demonstration apparently violates the FACE Act, a Clinton-era rule outlawing any interference with infanticide whatsoever. BLM can block highways. Environmentalists, Antifa, they can shut down any city they like they can stop mothers from driving their children to the hospital, actually, as we saw in one particularly high-profile incident recently, and it doesn't matter. They don't even get a slap on the wrist. Right. Uh, this thing that he just said, I take off, uh, you know, is also something that needs to be spoken on, certainly. You know, this uh, Black Lives Matter thing, of course, Black Lives Matter, White Lives Matter, Asian Lives Matter, all lives matter, you know, of course. But they have used this political movement right, and that, not only that, but a lot of other things, to try to reintroduce reverse racism, which is still racism, really, but now it's racism of black people against white people, especially in the United States, because it's a very racially diverse, if you're not in a racially diverse place, you might not fully understand that, you know, but it's a very uh, racially diverse place, okay, so they, they're, they're, they're sending this message, this suggestion that, okay, because your ancestors 400 years ago, or you know, however long ago, made us slaves, made our ancestors slaves, even though we ourselves have never actually been slaves, even for two seconds, okay? But then because of what happened that time, we now have a right to treat you badly. We now have a right to do whatever we want. We now have every single thing now is racism. And now they have, you know, succeeded to a certain extent to to turn people against white people, to turn especially black people against white people. Remember, it's all to divide us. It's all to cause destruction. It doesn't matter what your skin color is. That is foolishness in the highest order. Okay. So, but they, they, they want to they want to use that any way they can cause division. Really, they want to use that to incite division. So you must guard your mind. If you're a black American or a white American watching this, you know, do not let them succeed. And they do it in other ways as well, actually. But that one is just, it just, it's more obvious, you know. But it is in other ways as well. Do not allow the enemy to bring the vision. No matter what, you know, race you are, no matter what tribe you are, no matter what socioeconomic class you are, no matter what you are, do not let the enemy bring the vision. Now, back to this, this horrendous thing. But no one is allowed to so much as stand between an abortionist and his next victim. So these pro-lifers have already been sent to jail, potentially for months, as they await sentencing. Even more egregious, the demonstrate... Now, don't you see how it's funny? Because they use... Even the words that they introduce in the political spectrum and political sphere or whatever, 
It's intentionally made to cause division and to make you think that what is bad is good and what is good is bad. Okay? Now, they call people who don't want abortion, who want to keep their babies and ensure the production and the recurrence of life, pro-lifers. Okay? Because you are pro-life, right? So that is actually kind of accurate. Okay? Now, why don't they call the ones that are advocating for abortion pro-deathers? Because that would be more accurate, actually. Because you're actually pro-death. But no, they don't call them that. What do they call them? They call them pro-choice. They call them pro-choice. They make it seem like it's a good thing. But they should actually be called pro-death. Because that is what they are. Now, look at this. And, and these people that he mentioned, you know, these are real people with real families, real lives. Who have stood up for what is right and now have gotten their lives taken away from them because they stood up for what is right and they've been sent to prison now for months before they have their hearing okay because they stood up for what is right that is what the enemy that is what satan wants to turn our world into and every single person will pay for each and every single choice that they make understand that the bible even said every word every word every idle word any word you just said, just for saying it, say that you do not mean. Every word, you will account for it. Word or word. ABC word. Okay? You will account for it. To talk less of your actions. To talk less of your actions. Understand that. Understand that. And they got these pro-life advocates in prison was a direct response to the earlier discovery of illegal abortions performed by the baby butcher Cesare Santangelo. All abortions are crimes in the sense that they violate the natural law. But Santangelo's abortions were also crimes according to the civil law. And they were uncovered only because pro-lifers stumbled upon the remains of full-term babies a story that our legal and media establishment quickly swept under the rug. And now to tie up loose ends. Oh my God, did you hear what he just said? Now this is Michael Knowles. If you don't follow him, I would advise you to, you know. Uh, he's a very conservative person. And when I say conservative, I don't just mean in the political sphere. You know, they all want to have... Okay, so because you need voices of reason. Okay, of course, it's not the only one you can follow. The other voices that you can follow as well. But because this is his video, so I'm talking about him. You need voices of reason. Okay, you need voices that will actually lead you to the right path and not lead you straight to hell. Mainstream media should not be what you're following. Should not be what you're following at all. Okay, so there are a few voices of reason, like this Michael knows here. You have a uh, Matt Walsh, you have a uh, Candace Owens. You have, uh, you know, you have me, you know, even though I'm not that popular yet. You know, you have, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, am I like an OB? You have, uh, you know, different people. Okay. That will, you know, straighten out your mind and not let you be deceived by the enemy. Okay. So follow this guy and, uh, you know, I'll probably put those names in the description as well. Follow those men and women, okay? Now to tie up loose ends, they're sweeping the pro-life activists under the rug and straight into prison, too. All of which makes one wonder. Now to tie And they were uncovered. Now I want you to note what he just said. I'm repeating that. I want you to note what he just said. That's how evil these people are. Because one of the cases that they tried to make for abortion, especially the first, um, the first term, the f what do they call it? First term. That's the first three months. Okay. So the cases that they try to make is that okay, it's not, it's not a baby yet. It's just a fetus. It's just this. It's not that. It's just you know, it's so small. It's blah blah. It's really this that. So it's okay to get rid of it. Now, but listen to what he, that is garbage, by the way. Obviously, you know, because no matter how, even if it's one day old, it's still a child, you know. But now look at what he said to show the extremity of their evil. Only because pro-lifers stumbled upon the remains of full-term babies being thrown out with medical waste. 
A story that our legal and media establishment oh quickly God. swept under the rug. Now, listen. Listen to what he, he said. They found full-grown babies being thrown out. Okay? He was talking about a while ago, like, um, I think in the 80s or so. You know, being thrown out along with other, like, medical waste. Full-grown, full-term babies. Okay? So that probably bought it when they were eight or nine months. Okay? And that the media quickly swept it under the rug. Okay? Because they do not want you to know the truth. Anything that is true, they will, in fact, they will never show you that. But what they want you to know, the lies that they feed you, then they will show you that. They want you to have all the lies. So they feed you the lies. They feed you the entertainment. They feed you all the garbage that will not actually profit you. But any truth, any truth that they can hide from you, they will hide it. Especially mainstream media. So better get that. And now to tie up loose ends, they're sweeping the pro-life activists under the rug and straight into prison, too. All of which makes one wonder, just like Mitchell and Webb. Are we the baddies? We talk a lot about despotic regimes around the world. One of the key markers of those regimes is forget about the people they're killing, the injustice against the most vulnerable people in their nations. One of the key markers is how many political prisoners they lock up. And over the course of the last few years... Right. So it's, it's uh, starting to talk about the more political aspects of it. You know. So the... But you really need to note this, okay? Doing a crime against the most vulnerable you know, people in the society, they are the most vulnerable. They're literally still in the womb. I mean, they can do nothing to defend themselves. Okay. And they're getting killed by these heartless people. Take responsibility as a man. Take responsibility as a woman. Take responsibility as a society. Okay. And put an end to this, this madness. Okay. There is this, uh, there is this group. Uh, I cannot remember their names. I will definitely put it in the description. But thank the Lord for them, okay? They have been able to save, I think, almost 50,000 abortions, okay? Because they pay for an ultrasound. And, you know, if you have the ultrasound, many of the mothers will choose not to abort anymore when they see the ultrasound and they see the baby and they say, okay, this is a baby. This is not just a fetus or something I can just get rid of. Okay? So thank the Lord for them. They've been able to, you know, do the the you know the right thing and save these babies and one thing anyways sometimes it's the mother and the father that decide to have that you know that on that stupid decision to abort the baby but there are also many times where it's only the mother where the father is irresponsible men you need to be responsible don't be a piece of garbage don't just have a penis and only let that be why you call yourself a man. No, having a penis does not make you a man. It just makes you a male species. Being a man means taking responsibility for your actions. Being there when you are needed. Being dependable. Being there for your family. And taking responsibility for your actions. Because she would not be pregnant if not for you. So better learn right. And stop letting the enemy deceive you. When you embrace, I'm, I'm quoting someone here who is also a man like you guys, you know, although I'm talking to everybody, but right now I'm talking specifically to men. When you embrace responsibility, you find meaning, okay? Other than the fact that God is going to punish you if you don't, and he's going to bless you if you do, that one is definitely there, you know. But also, when you embrace responsibility, you find meaning. You find meaning to life, okay? And I think that that's very important to note. Because the enemy wants you to think that, oh, you should not want to take responsibility. You should just want to have fun, 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 stupid, senseless life. That is not what will profit you at the end of the day. At all. Remember, the enemy hates you. So anything he pushes is ultimately for your destruction. Remember that. Guard your minds. Let's all be responsible people in every single way that we are to be responsible. And let's, let, let our society get back on the right track. So may the Lord help us all, okay? 
So uh, I hope you've learned certain things. And uh, share this, like the video, let it get out to more people and all that. You know, gain knowledge and remain blessed.